What's going on you savages? Welcome back to more WWE News and Rumors Roundup. This is episode 173, keeping you guys up to date with all the latest news and rumors that have been happening throughout the week. As always, News and Rumors Roundup is sponsored to you guys by Wrestle Crate. An unboxing should be coming out very soon for this month, Crate. But if you guys want a mystery box every single month with wrestling goodies, Wrestle Crate is where it's at and use Macho T at checkout to save 10% on your first crate. Also, if you are in New York city next weekend during SummerSlam weekend HOG is hosting their biggest event of the year high intensity 6 this year featuring Matt Riddle Bret Hart amongst many others so make sure that you guys check them out it is the indie wrestling show to check out if you're here in New York City during SummerSlam weekend more info down in the description below nonetheless guys moving on with the news and rumors so the first story I want to talk about is one that has been talked about ever since Smackdown went off the air last week and I'm talking about in regards to the Shinsuke Nakamura vs John Cena match because contrary to previous reports it is being reported that Vince McMahon was furious with Shinsuke Nakamura for John Cena landing on his head and neck for the spot that happened during their match. Even after the match we had Shinsuke Nakamura saying sorry to John Cena where John Cena just stated that he doesn't have to be sorry. It was a nice moment but again it looks like Vince McMahon was furious in regards to it. However Justin Barrasso is indicating that the CEO hasn't lost faith in Shinsuke Nakamura but another mistake by Shinsuke Nakamura might not go well with Vince McMahon. Hopefully this is something that does not ruin Nakamura push in the WWE and let's just hope that Vince McMahon was just having a bad day. Moving on in the latest in regards to Pete Dunne because some breaking news has been popping up over the last couple of hours as WWE United Kingdom Champion Pete Dunne has been pulled from this weekend progress shows due to an injury he suffered. Pete Dunne was injured at Friday's Battle Pro event after he suffered a cut above his left eye which required 11 stitches. Dunn hasn't been cleared to compete for the rest of the weekend and Progress Wrestling did make the announcement via Twitter. On what it is a good news though, a Pro Wrestling she is reporting that we could be seeing Derek Young back on WWE television very soon because he is officially cleared to compete. He will be coming back from this injury which kept him out for a couple of months. Another report that has been a hot topic this week is in regards to CM Punk and the Bullet Club because as of late the faction has been heavily hinting at CM Punk joining the faction. This shouldn't really come off as a surprise as the faction have been aiming to recruit CM Punk for quite some time now. And just a month ago the Young Bucks posted a photo on Twitter and they tagged CM Punk in it where before that we had CM Punk saying the following about the Young Bucks. You guys are number one in my heart and merch sales that's all that really matters. We had Kenny Omega also referring CM Punk and tweeting him and now the infamous group is back at it again with all their CM Punk teases. This time the other half of the Young Bucks, Matt Jackson and the villain posted this t-shirt design on Twitter. Tagging CM Punk and tweeting him, hey man check this out. Report also indicate that it should be noticed that Ring of Honor Global Wars pay per view would take place in Chicago, Illinois which is the hometown of CM Punk. The show will also feature Bullet Club's leader. Kenny Omega defending his IWGP US Championship and this is the quote unquote reason why the t-shirt was made. Now let's not get ahead of ourselves because this might as well not even mean anything and chances are that it doesn't. We know that CM Punk is way too focused on UFC at the moment and he's certainly not interested in wrestling but it is a good thing specifically for us fans to see these type of interaction between guys that are pretty much awesome at what they do which is obviously pro wrestling and entertaining us. And some pretty awesome some news I'm a Dove Ziggler mark so I'm pretty sure that you guys already know that if you have been watching me for a while and we got some good news I guess some potential good news so Dave Meltzer gave us a little bit of an update of what is going on with Dove Ziggler and why we haven't seen him in WWE television he indicated a couple of things specifically saying that WWE just doesn't have much for a lot of guys at the moment so they don't really have any storyline plan for them for a couple of guys not just Dove Ziggler but in regards to Dove Ziggler chances are he indicated that he could possibly be getting repackaged at the moment so by the time that he does come back which is hopefully after SummerSlam maybe by then it will be a fresh start for him. I just cannot understand how WWE every single time that they give him a push a month after that push starts they basically just kills it off and it's very disappointing. I mean look at it right now for example Dolph Ziggler was technically in a main event match at SummerSlam last year because he was facing the WWE champion but now instead we have an 
been off television for quite some time and obviously we know he's doing other stuff and he's pretty much working live events he's just not appearing on television because they don't have anything for him moving on in regards to Joan Jones there's some rumors indicating that he could show up at SummerSlam even if it is to be at ringside during the Brock Lesnar match however reports are coming out indicating that this will probably not be the case because WWE won't allow him to be at ringside because they think that it will take too much away from the actual match that is happening and I completely agree it will definitely put the focus on him instead of actually being the focus on the fatal four-way match also don't be disappointed with this news because the rock completely transformed his iconic Brahma bull tattoo and I mean it looks freaking amazing a lot of people were actually salty that he was doing this but I don't see why because it's still a Brahma bull and that's exactly what the rock is and now it's just much more bigger and it's just facing forward instead of actually facing the way that it was before so again it looks pretty beast and apparently only took 22 hours so go figure it looks like the rock has times for everything nonetheless I'm moving on and trust me we got much more because uh, there's a lot of news for me to catch up so I figure I'll just do a big roundup today so you're welcome we're halfway through so make sure that you guys elbow drop that like button reports came out yesterday that Ric Flair has been hospitalized but there's actually nothing to panic about because it is being reported that Ric Flair was checked into the hospital yes but it was simply for some routine checkups Ric Flair representative indicated this and they also stated that there's nothing to panic about so that is certainly good to hear nonetheless moving on another big story coming up this week is the fact that Ronda Rousey is apparently already training for pro wrestling as reports are coming out that Brian Kendrick is the one assigned to train her this is just fuel adding to the speculation that the WWE does want Ronda Rousey in their product also so the rumor that the WWE wants to do an MMA horsewoman versus WWE horsewoman match potentially at Wrestlemania or even sooner maybe at Survivor Series rumors are also indicating that the WWE is trying to tease this at the May Young Classic finale which will be live later on this year sticking with the women's division don't have any doubts because Sasha Banks is expected to be challenging Alexa Blitz for the Raw Women's Championship at SummerSlam now that Bayley is out with an injury which at the moment reports are indicating that the shoulder injury that she's having is not looking good and it might actually keep her off action for longer than expected no specific day on that but as always I'll keep you guys fully up to date more news in regards to SummerSlam because it looks like the Woken and Hardy Boys might not actually be at the event it is being reported that now with the revival out the Hardy Boys match against Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows might not even happen but if it does happen it will more than likely happen in the kickoff show this is very disappointing to hear but nonetheless the reason for is that apparently of course WWE is booking way too many matches for the pay-per-view and even though it's four hours they do want to conserve time I am hoping that the Usos versus the New Day is not move on to the kickoff show because that would be very disappointing considering that they pretty much have been probably the best thing on Smackdown Live at the moment and their match on last month pay-per-view which was probably the worst pay-per-view ever was pretty much the only match that was exciting to watch so again it would just be a slap in the face if they end up in the kickoff show of SummerSlam another match that was confirmed for SummerSlam was John Cena versus Baron Corbin and it looks like we will see Nikki Bella returning to the WWE at least she will be at ringside during SummerSlam and during the John Cena match so if that is the case it looks like we will very well see her back in WWE television soon and the last piece of news that I got for you guys is another update in regards to the superstar shakeup that is rumored to happen this year again PW Insider is reporting that WWE is likely going to do two separate superstar shakeups each year instead of one draft it's also being reported that if WWE does go ahead and do two shakeups within the same year it is expected that the next one will be after SummerSlam so between SummerSlam and Survivor Series I will honestly prefer for us to just have a single draft every single year or even every two years because you don't need guys to be switching that often honestly you don't you have a good roster at the moment and each roster is actually fully stacked where you could sustain yourself to not have a draft every single year or at least a superstar shakeup twice a year that's a little bit overkill in my opinion let me know down in the comments below what you guys think what do you guys prefer for us to have two superstar shakeup a year or for us to just have one wwe draft like the big one like the first one that we had last year i certainly prefer for it to be like last year instead of us getting so many switches through 
throughout the year. Nonetheless guys, to be fully up to date on much more WWE news and rumors and WWE games coverage, make sure that you guys turn on those notifications and if you haven't subscribed because we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. And Savages, one last thing, make sure that you guys elbow drop that like button because you guys have been showing the love recently and I absolutely love it. Last round up we did over 600 likes, so let's try to aim for 700 this time around. Nonetheless you Savages, thank you for watching, I'm Dig it!